What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know regarding transport and no, this is not the kind of transport as in flying, running, taking a boat trip. It's not this kind of transport, unfortunately. This is the kind of transport where we learn about how things are transported in our body, how nutrients go where they need to go, how our oxygen goes where it needs to go. This kind of transport is what we're talking about. So this video will have two sections. We're going to first focus on transport within animals and then we're going to go on to talk about transport in plants, okay? So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So let's just get started. So like I just said, we're going to be learning about transport, how things are moved around our body. Now, in our body, we have so many systems, right? Including our cardiovascular system, our respiratory system, our immune system, our digestive system, so many systems, and each of them have their own role. Now, the cardiovascular system is very important in this video because this system is responsible for moving everything where it needs to go inside our body, okay? So we can break the word down, cardiovascular system. Cardio refers to heart and vascular refers to our little vessels, all the pipes inside our body. And then inside these vessels, inside these pipes, we have blood, right? So red blood cells, white blood cells, nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, many, many things dissolved in our blood. So the combination of these three things make up our cardiovascular system, which is responsible for transport. So I want you to understand now also that each of the systems in our body don't work in isolation. They depend on each other a little bit. So an example is our cardiovascular system depends on our other systems. For example, one you need to know about is our respiratory system. So when we open up here, uh, Eddie Hall, the world's strongest man, we look at his lungs and his heart and we see here, okay, so out here in our chest, we have the lungs. Uh, we have these pipes that lead to our lungs called our trachea and our bronchioles, right? We learn about that in the respiratory system video. And situated in between our two lungs, we have our heart. Normally, our heart is actually the shape of our fist, like a clenched fist. So this is obviously exaggerated unless you got a huge hand or something. Now, like I said, these two body systems work together. So how? Our respiratory system is going to be responsible for bringing air such as oxygen inside our body, inside our lungs, and then putting that air into our bloodstream, okay, into our bloodstream. Now, our cardiovascular system is going to help us distribute that blood, which contains nutrients and oxygen, to all the cells of our body. Because if we can keep our cells healthy and happy, then we will be alive. We will be healthy and happy. Okay. Now, it's important for us to understand how our cardiovascular system looks like. So let's go take a look at how it looks like. So let's say we have our heart here. How are all the vessels uh, linked to the heart and where are they all going? What's the whole circulation deal? So I'm going to show you a simplified diagram here of what you need to know about this circulatory system, okay? The cardiovascular system. So in the center here, we have our what? This is our heart. You're gonna, there's going to be a video where you guys learn a lot more details about the structure of the heart, the whole um, exact details of the circulation. For now, it's just to understand the overview because in this video, we're really going to focus more on the vessels. So we got our heart here and it's the pump. It's going to be the machine that's going to pump that blood across our body. So first, our heart is going to start and it's going to pump blood into this little vessel, this vessel here. Okay, We call that an artery, an artery. Specifically, we call it a large artery, okay, because they're attached to the heart and they're quite big. Now, the condition of our blood here is important to understand. So the blood here that is being pumped away from our heart um, in this scenario here will have a lot of oxygen. They're nice and fresh and it's got low carbon dioxide. Okay, so very important. This is the kind of blood our cells like. It likes to have a lot of oxygen because we know we need a lot of oxygen so we can do cell respiration and make ATP. And the same goes for low carbon dioxide. So this fresh blood is being pumped out of our large artery. And then we know these arteries will branch into smaller arteries. Okay, small arteries. And then they'll continue branching and branching till they become such small arteries. We call them arterioles. Arterial. So a small artery is just called an arterial. And then it gets branched so small that we reach a destination, which we call the even smallest little vessels called capillaries. Okay, so 
what we have here is our heart is pumping that, that fresh blood all over our body, our lower body, our upper body, any cells that you can think of that needs this blood, that needs this blood. So it's being sent large artery, small artery, arterial, and finally capillaries. These are such small vessels. Now, the capillaries are special because these um, are the vessels that are responsible for, um, these are the vessels where the nutrients and the oxygen can leave the bloodstream and go to our cells, right? So at the capillaries, we have a lot of cells that need the oxygen and nutrients and all that. So the capillaries is nice and specialized because they are the place where this blood can actually leave and go to the cells. Okay, that's important to understand. That's different from these large and small arteries. They are not allowed to let the blood leave. Only the capillaries are. So the capillaries allow this oxygen to leave and go to the cells and the cells can use them now for whatever they need to. And at the same time, the cells here can make waste like carbon dioxide and things like that. Now this waste is gonna be sent into the capillaries so that they can be taken back to the heart. So the blood coming out of here from the capillaries, we can consider waste blood because it's not fresh anymore. All the cells here drained this blood from the capillaries and used its nutrients and oxygen and now gave it back waste. So the waste is now coming back into this little vessel here, which we now call a venule. This is a small vein. And this small vein, the small venule, will drain into a bigger venules and bigger until we have the biggest veins, okay? So a venule is just a small kind of vein. So they drain out here. Now the blood here, important, is waste blood. So we can consider this kind of blood to be low in oxygen. Why? Because these cells here around the capillaries sucked out all of the oxygen from this vessel here, from the capillaries here, and gave back carbon dioxide because we know carbon dioxide is a waste product from cell respiration when we try and make ATP. So this blood here will now be the opposite. Low oxygen, high carbon dioxide. We don't want this in our body, okay? We don't want the high carbon dioxide in our body and we want, well, we want more oxygen, okay? So now it's coming back to the heart and now the heart cannot just take this blood and repeat the cycle. It can't just take it and pump it back because this blood is dirty. It's waste blood. If it sends it now to the cells, it'll be useless because there's no food, there's no nutrients, there's no oxygen in there, it'll be useless. So the heart first has to do something else that's very important. And that's why I keep emphasizing that our circulatory system is closely related to our pulmonary system or our lungs, our respiratory system. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.